With the killer robot revolution bound to happen and humanity's impending doom looming on the horizon, I only felt it prudent to familiarize myself with the technology. So to do this, I recently added a CNC machine to the shop and I wanted to explore some of its capabilities in this video. But before I go and do something as silly as let this robot loose with a sharp implement of destruction in its control, I figured it might be a good idea to start it off by just equipping it with a felt tipped marker. So I quickly threw together a small wooden block that has a pen sized hole in it that I can mount onto the carriage assembly of the CNC. Chamfering the edges to make it a little less sharp and adding some finish to pretty it up a bit. Now I can just screw it right onto the spindle housing and stick in the marker. Zeroing the machine and giving it a try. To my surprise, it actually worked. Now I figured this technique will help me be able to visualize the finished product easily and it'll help me get properly sized stock for the individual carves that this project requires. But now that this robot knows it can control a pen, I've had to keep my checkbook in the other room. And as you may have been able to discern, I'll be turning my logo into a sign for the shop using some inlays done on the CNC. It should be a learning experience for me, so let's see how I do. I start off by milling up some rough sawn ash on the joiner and getting one flat face. Once I had that, I could run it through the planer and get things to their proper thickness. This light colored wood will be used for the top row of letters and for the frame around the sign. Once I had the boards dimensioned, I just made sure that they were big enough for the carve and then glued them up into a panel. Now for the darker letters, I chose to use walnut, so I found two pieces that were long enough and then glued them together. But for the background of the sign, I chose to use cherry, and I lucked out by having the perfectly sized piece right on hand. I just needed to cut it to width over at the miter saw. Now I can take the ash panel, clamp it down, fire up the spindle, and kick off the first car. With that going, I can finish preparing the walnut piece by resawing it down on the bandsaw. And then I planed it down to its final thickness. I checked in with the carve to see how it was going and I saw a couple pieces that broke loose, so I just picked them out of there. And then while I waited for the rest of the carb to finish, I ate my pretzel shaped vegetables and my vitamin filled sandwiches. This CNC woodworking is hard work. Once the ash pieces were done, I could investigate the finished product. My poor frame. Oh well. But this looks great. Then it was on to carving the dark colored letters from the walnut. Now with those out of the way, I could recut a new frame since the other one broke. And the last thing to carve out on the CNC is the cherry background. 
This will have all the mortises for the letters to lay in. So I first started out with a 1 8 inch straight cutting bit to rough out each of the letters. Then once that was finished, I could switch to a much smaller 1 16 inch bit for a detailed pass where it gets into all the nooks and crannies that the larger bit couldn't, as well as it creates a much more precise fitting mortise for the letters to fit into. And a couple of episodes of Dukes of Hazard later, the carve was finally complete and I could give the machine a much needed rest. Next, it was on to cutting through all the tabs on the back with a utility knife to free up the letters. This step didn't take long at all, and soon I had everything popped out and ready for cleanup. Before doing that though, I had to trim the cherry background. See, since the design file I used had complex layering around the outside of the image, it created a section that needed to be cut off by hand. I tried adjusting the bow linear festerance and modifying the convergence metrics to account for the vectored variances, but it turns out that I just made up all those terms and I really have no idea what I'm doing. Nevertheless, the bandsaw made short work of most of it and I just used a pull saw to nip off the rest. Then with a sharp chisel, I could clean up the cut and make everything square, flat, and smooth. Each of the letters got their tabs cleaned off. And then I could round over some of the sharp edges so that they'd fit down into their respective mortises. I made some real tiny pieces that will fit inside the top of the hand plane section and then I just set them off to the side for later. Once I had all the pieces dry fit and looking good, I said a prayer and then broke out the glue bottle. I went P first and then I did the P first. I made sure to get all the edges as best as I could and to do the same within the mortise. Then I sent each one of them home with some taparoos. Then it was just a whole bunch of rinse and repeat until all the letters were seated. and then finally adding the frame. I made a sled for it to eliminate any chance of snipe and then flattened it all out with the planer. And now I could mash in those little pieces that I was saving. And then I just clean things up with a sharp chisel. I used a rabbiting bit in the router to trim the back side. This got rid of those bandsaw marks and will give the sign a floating effect once it's up on the wall. I sanded everything smooth. And then I drilled out a small section on the back to put a picture hanging bracket. And since I work for the Department of Redundancy Department, I put my logo on the back too. For a finish, I covered the whole thing in several coats of Danish oil. And then it was ready to hang up. 
I gotta say, at first I really didn't think there was a spot in my shop for a CNC, but now after using it for a bit, I keep thinking of projects that it would be perfect for, and I'm really glad I got it. Well, the sign looks great, and I'm pretty happy with it. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give me a like and a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. There's a lot more projects to come, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. So, as long as my CNC doesn't kill me in my sleep tonight, I'll see you next time. So here's my poor letter P. It looks like the tabs didn't hold and they popped loose and so then the the spindle caught right here and I had to hit the emergency oh crap button and shut everything off. Um, good thing that button is there though. This might be salvageable but I think I'll probably just cut a new one. My computer blue screened. <sighs> Man, now I gotta do this all over again. Crap. What just happened? Oh no, this broke. Oh, shucks. Well, let me show you what happened. It looks like my little frame here split and somehow the spindle dragged everything off the clamp so this clamp isn't even holding anymore. Uh, ooh, this is no bueno. Hopefully I don't have to do it all again. Oh, I am gonna do it. I have to do it again. Oh, nuts. Oh well, it is what it is. I'm never gonna get this thing in there. So not only are you a flathead, but you're microscopic. How am I gonna get this in there? Perfect.